guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I filmed one of my favorite, if not my favorite video to film for you guys. We did a full face, a testing new makeup, full face of first impressions. This is what we ended up with. I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. There was some products that I was very, very impressed with, and then there was some that we definitely could have went without. But all in all, I'm happy with how it came out. If you guys are interested to see how I came up with this makeup look, then keep on watching. But before you go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days so you never have to miss me for too long but yeah let's just go ahead and get into it all right guys usually I would have my brows done but we do actually have a new brow product today we have two actually to fill in my brows today I'm going to be using this Fenty Beauty ultra fine brow pencil and this is in the color black brown just to show you guys this actually has a really unique spoolie brushes that went viral years ago that were like the paddles I'll put a picture of them that's what this looks like a mini version of this pencil is actually pretty tiny which I love 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 tiny brow pencils. I mean, it works like a regular spoolie. It's just a little bit different than what I'm used to. Well, I like the color. It is nice and it does have a good pigment to it. When I'm doing my outline, I start very light. That way I'm not using too much product and then I will go in a little bit deeper, but I do like it. It's really creamy. This is what it looks like. So it has a pretty good pigment to it and I think the color is really, really gorgeous. Usually, like I said, I would fill my brow in with a pomade, but I don't have a new pomade. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this pencil. I like doing my eyes first because I don't have to worry about fallout or anything like that. The only time I do my brows after my face is when I'm doing a like light face makeup. So I'll put on concealer powder and I have noticed that it is easier to put on your eyebrow products if your brows are like powdered. It kind of like takes away the oil and makes it really easy to apply. Sometimes if brow products are too creamy, when you're spooling them out, the product smears. But I found with this, when I was spooling it out, it didn't really smudge. It did a little bit over here, but it doesn't look not natural. It just really blended in really nicely. We are off to a good start. We do have a new pot concealer to try today. This is from Bare Minerals, and it is the Correcting Concealer Broad Spectrum SPF 20. And I just picked up the color Dark 2. As of recently, I have been using Stick Foundation also to carve out my brows. And I I've really been loving that. But this is just what the color looks like. Just a little disclaimer for you guys. Dipping into it, it's actually really creamy. Sometimes products have a little bit of a film over the top of them. So it's like you have to break that cast to get to the, the meat of the product. But this is creamy right off the bat. So that gives me hope. That is really creamy. It's not super full coverage. It seems to be blending out really easily. I think the color is pretty good also. I've never heard anybody talk about this. I feel like pot concealer is something that really does not get talked a whole lot about. It's definitely a more like natural glam brown. As long as it has like a decent coverage and it's easy to blend out, I usually like it. And my brows are kind of going through it and trying to grow them out and kind of change my shape up a little bit. I would say the coverage on this is a about medium. I feel like the brows look pretty decent. I like this one more than this one, which usually it's the other way around. I know y'all see her tail right now. <laughs> Literally just jumped up here. All right, y'all are gonna be proud of me. This is the eye look. It's kind of like a greenish, reddish, Christmassy moment. Today I have a new eyeshadow palette and I went ahead and used this Violet Boss All of You Forever. Guys, look at the shades in here. I know this is very fall vibes. I got it in a boxy charm a while ago. I am so excited to show you guys the look that I came up with and talk about this palette. First, I went in with these two colors right here, Endless Desire and Wink. And I kind of use more of Wink, which is the lighter color, because this is my transition. And I just want you guys to see how blendable these are. They just are so easy to blend and super buttery. Just kind of diffusing that outside because I don't want it to be super harsh with a clean brush and then just going back in just along that crease. Um, I wasn't really sure because you guys know everything in me I wanted to use this shade right here, Juicy, but I was like, you know what? I haven't ever done green eyeshadow, I don't think. And green is something that scares me to death, not just in makeup, but in general. My phone is green. Now that we're gonna talk about it and green is my least favorite color. 
so it was the only thing they had left and I was desperate so I went ahead and built on top of it a little bit on the inside because I felt like I needed a little bit more color and just so smooth I found with some eyeshadows they will bring out the texture in your eyes and you guys can see I have a lot of wrinkles and stuff in my eyes and this is not doing that this is like just smoothing over everything kind of how powder foundation does for your liquid foundation I was really excited to try this black color in here because I think blacks can be a huge hit or miss I took this color right here ignite and I'm just taking a denser blending brush and I place this right out in my V and not bringing out any farther than the white of my eye right there. I'm gonna do with this is smoke it out. Another blending brush. Kept the color right where it was, but I just wanted to kind of diffuse it a little bit. I kind of have the same routine for my eyeshadow. Let me know what you guys do first. Do you do your lid shade first? Do you do your crease first? And sometimes it depends. Sometimes I will do my lid shade first if I'm doing halo eye, but look at how gorgeous that was. Original brush, blend everything together. I had to, had to, had to use one of these green shades because I mean it is a green eyeshadow palette. First for the outer half of my lid, I took the color All Love Me, this deeper one right here. So I just took my finger, such a pretty color, and I just packed that on the outer half of where the black meets. Pretty, pretty, pretty. This makes me want to wear green eyeshadow every day. On a clean finger, I'm going to take this color right here, I'll Love You, which is like a silverish slash greenish color. It pulls more silver, but when you get it on the eye, you guys can see it does pull that green. I just put that right on the inner half. And I'm barely touching my eye. Let me emphasize that. I could have cut my crease, but I find that if you have hooded eyes, you can usually get away with not cutting your crease versus if your eyes aren't hooded, you usually have to cut your crease. I use seven of the shades in here. For eye primer, sorry, I forgot to mention, I use this Makeup Revolution Prime and Lock Eyeshadow Primer. Now for my favorite part of makeup, it is time for complexion. So we have pretty much all new complexion products. For primer today, I'm going to be using this Marc Jacobs Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer, and this is in the color 30 Invisible. And this is supposed to instantly smooth the skin, and it's supposed to be a makeup maximizer. So I'm I'm guessing that's supposed to help with longevity. I wanna see how this is as far as smoothing because I may pair it with something else. When I think of like coconut and stuff like that, I think of something that is gonna be more hydrating. And I got this from TJ Maxx, by the way, but I think of something that's gonna be more hydrating. Don't get me wrong, I will use a hydrating primer, but I like to use it in conjunction with a mattifying primer or a pore filling primer to help with the longevity because I do have oily skin. So this does look like to be a lotion texture. The scent is really light. It doesn't even really smell like coconut. I can smell it slightly. It was two pumps. I'm gonna use just half a pump on my forehead. It did do a little bit of pore filling. I'm really worried about right in here. It feels nice on the skin. It's not heavy. I was a little worried because it was a little bit runny. It was like a very runny lotion, but it does feel pretty nice on the skin. You guys are gonna make fun of me because I'm very, very late to the bandwagon. About a year late? How long has this foundation been out? A long time. Anyways, it doesn't matter because I got here. Today I'm going to be using the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation and I'm in the color 450N and it claims to be a foundation elixir that feels barely there while building coverage and boosting your natural glow. So I know this does claim to have a natural finish, which sometimes scares me because I do have oilier skin, but I saw a lot of people that have oily skin like me and they seem to really like this. This is the shade that Sephora's Match thing recommended me. If it's off, it's not my fault. I really wasn't all that excited when I heard that she was coming out with the foundation. <gasps> okay, this is very liquidy. This just like bursted everywhere. If you guys can see, it's all over my desk. Okay. <gasps> Did I shake it too hard? It almost looks like thin chocolate milk. Let's try this again. Maybe I gotta open it more slowly. Okay, that worked a little bit better. <laughs> oh, that's actually a pretty good match, okay. Feels very, very watery, but I do like the applicator. You guys know, especially as of recently, I've been trying a lot of foundations that are very mess-free. I said that I was gonna start picking up the brushes and the tools that come. This sponge is actually on sale. It was seven bucks. I'll put a picture of it, whatever one she sells. Very, very porous. It looks like a sponge that you would use in like a bath or to wash your dishes. It feels really dry. I'm just a little bit concerned because I like really soft sponges. I don't know if it's on sale because they're about to discontinue it or what. Mm. 
it's awfully rough on the face and i can tell that it is leaving those little holy it's leaving like the texture of the sponge is being transferred i'm not a fan of this we're gonna switch over to a brush oh wow okay that actually looks a lot better that's actually really pretty and we'll really be able to tell because I got some mean spots over here that are like super red. It looks to have about medium coverage. I can still see like some imperfections peeking through, but it claims to be buildable. So maybe we'll try to put a little bit more on. You can see it does have coverage. But back to that sponge, just why I tell you guys, I am a firm believer that the tools that you use to apply your products are just as important as the products themselves. You can have like the best foundation and the best makeup products and have the worst sponges ever and the worst brushes ever, and it will not matter. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sponge side with the brush because usually I'll do half brush, half sponge, but I do not like that sponge. I don't know who approved that, but that was, that was just not good. It does feel a little bit heavy, like I can tell that it's there, but once I blend it out, that feeling seems to go away. You know, I take that back because it is starting to feel a little heavy all over my face. I'm going to use another brush. I changed two because this was leaving streak marks on this side of my face and I use that brush all the time and it never does that. Well, after three different tools, it does look pretty on the skin. I am going to be wearing this makeup for a couple of hours today. So if you want to know how it wore, check in the description box and I will keep you guys updated. I have tested so many natural foundations in the past like two weeks. I forget what matte looks like and it kind of makes me sad. I can still see a little bit of my redness over here, but for the most part it is gone. I don't know. I'm not like super wowed. I feel like everybody made it seem like this was life-changing. First impressions, it's all right. I don't like that it's splurged out everywhere. Definitely not a fan of this sponge. I am going to go ahead and get rid of this, actually. Could see why this is on sale right now. I guarantee you that they're getting ready to discontinue this. There is still hope, guys, because this has been going pretty good, so we're not going to lose hope yet. I did also pick up the concealer to go along with this, and I got the same color 450 in, and it seems like this is one thing I like that they do. They automatically lighten the the concealer assuming that people use it to brighten which I mean personally I like because I do this is the shade 450 in the concealer and this is the shade 450 in the foundation so just a little bit lighter than probably what you need it to be to go really nice underneath the eyes but I do like the tops on these I know that she made these tops like this because it's some condition that she has and I really like the story behind it I thought that was really sentimental the concealer is definitely thicker than the foundation it's not splurging out everywhere and the applicator is not like your traditional applicator let me show you guys it's kind of slanted so usually dofa applicators will not be like this it's like slanted you guys can see i'm sure that that will hopefully make it easy to apply this is burning that's not cute i had a foundation brush too oh my gosh guys i literally suck i'm gonna use this foundation brush to blend out the concealer it's literally inevitable for me to mess up one thing in these videos. No matter how much I plan or even if I lay all the products out in front of me, I always forget something. Okay, now that's actually pretty. It wouldn't hurt me to go a little bit lighter because usually I do like super light under eyes. It's actually more medium to full. I don't think that I would have liked this foundation brush for all over my face because it's a little too small, but it's actually perfect for putting on concealer because it has that tapered applicator to where it fits perfectly in your eye. Okay, well, that is actually pretty. We're very glowy still. I think first impressions, I like the concealer a little bit more than the foundation. It wasn't as messy. I mean, it all looks really pretty on the skin, but just I think this traumatized me a little bit from opening it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna wear this for a couple hours. We'll be able to see how it wears. The purpose for me in doing these full fixes of first impressions is to give you like a lot of rapid mini reviews. Um, I feel like I can't really wear it all day and then me be able to say everything about every single product on my face because I've never tried all these products together. So how am I supposed to know what they'll look like, you know, separately? I don't. That's why I mention them again in favorites or in my shop, my stashes. That's what I use those videos for to tell you guys and keep you updated on products when I use them. Next, I'm actually really, really excited to try this next product. It's really weird because I will go into TJ 
Max and especially with the brand e.l.f. I will see stuff in there sometimes that I've never seen on their website. This one in particular I have never seen on the website. This is the e.l.f. Matte Setting Powder in the color Medium Beige. I tried the Halo Glow Loose Setting Powder and I really liked it. It's really pretty. It's just not me. I still keep it because it's pretty and it works and I like to use it to recommend it to you guys but I like a really matte under eye and let me know if you guys have ever seen anybody try this I have never heard anybody talk about this so when I saw it I was like okay is this a scam I feel like the one thing that elf could really work on is their powders and their powder foundations their concealers kill it I literally just dumped that out everywhere I'm gonna go wet another sponge because I want to try this with a sponge and a brush so I'll be right back I'm gonna go ahead and do the sponge side first but before I do that I'm gonna take this elf flawless concealer brush and just go underneath my eyes this is a tip I learned from juicy jazz and it has been life-changing if you're somebody with a lot of texture underneath your eyes like I am you guys can see I have a lot of fine fine lines there's some things especially underneath your eyes that no sponge can reach so I just use this to ensure that there's no creasing or that my makeup doesn't hang on weird and then if it does I know it's the makeup's fault this is the blending sponge. I'm just gonna dip this into here and I really hope I like this. It does look a little bit lighter than the medium beige from the Halo Glow setting powder but it's okay because I do like a little bit of a bright and under eye anyway and I told you guys I probably could have went a shade lighter in this concealer. Just seeing what it looks like before I put it on. Please be pretty, please be pretty. Ooh, oh my gosh. All of my prayers are being answered today. So you guys can see the difference. This looks gorgeous. Up close, it does not feel dry. We're gonna try it with the brush. This is my thing. Products like this that are actually amazing, why are they not more talked about? Especially when they're from a well-known brand like e.l.f. Oh my gosh, please do not let me down. To be honest, I kind of like the sponge side just a little bit more because I felt like with the sponge, the product could really soak into the skin. Um, this doesn't look bad, but it definitely looks a little bit more textured, especially right up here. The sponge was able to kind of melt the product and then put it into your face. Now, I wonder if going over it with a sponge would do anything. I can't really tell. I'm in love. This better not let me down when I use it next time. 10 out of 10. I would recommend though, Use it with a sponge, not a brush. That's why we do both over here, guys, because I'm telling you, tools make all of the difference. If you are somebody with oilier skin and you do prefer a more matte finish, go ahead and use this matte setting powder. And then if you like a more normal slash glowy look, use that Halo Glow setting powder, but they're both good. It's just all about preference. I can't stop looking at this side of my face because that made all the difference. I think me too, because I have all this shine going on. Usually I'm not used to being this shiny when I have my foundation on because I do tend to lean towards matte. I do use some natural foundations, but the majority of my collection is definitely matte. This is everything I needed and more. And it's gonna get even better because this powder better be good. I went ahead and splurged because I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. This is the Lancome Long Time No Shine Translucent Mattifying and Loose Setting Powder. I absolutely love, 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 love their foundation and their powder foundation is actually really good too. Okay, we, we bougie. Please make my skin look amazing. The saying in makeup that it gets worse before it gets better is so true because even when I use a matte foundation sometimes, liquid just accentuates texture. Not accentuates, but you can definitely tell that it's there. And then once you put powder on it, it just like smooths everything out. It's like a filter. This better be good. We again are gonna use this with a sponge and a brush. So I'm gonna use this sponge on this side of my face. And it kind of has a pinkish tint to it. After I powder my face completely, we're gonna check for flashback. This side versus this side. Can you guys tell the difference? You can tell on my forehead. Look, this side is shiny and this side isn't. That foundation kind of looks like it dried down a little bit on my cheek. My forehead, not so much. And it's so weird because as I've been trying all of these natural foundations, I have noticed that different parts of my face are different. So like my cheeks definitely are a lot more normal. 
versus my forehead and my t-zone are a lot more oily i didn't really ever really notice that with matte foundation because it just stayed matte all day but that's weird am i the only one that saw that or, or no and i barely used any product no more shine goodbye she's gone my skin looks so good and again i think i am going to prefer the sponge i feel like the sponge did a, a little bit better of a job smoothing my dumb self why did i not use this puff you know what? it never hurts though i'm gonna use the puff on this side of my face because you can really never have too much powder as long as you have a good setting spray I have powder puffs, I just never use them. That wasn't bad either. So I would say probably my favorite would be sponge, powder puff, then brush. Number one being my favorite and then three being my least favorite. Why am I so afraid to do this flashback test? <gasps> There's a God in heaven. Neither one of them have flashback. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, but now that I'm looking at my face, I know I had mentioned to you guys, this looks like it has a little bit of a pink tint. And I don't know if I'm seeing things or if I can kind of tell that there's a pink tint. What do you guys think? Sometimes I can tell when I'm watching the footage back better than I can in person. I don't know why. It's not super noticeable, but if I really sit here and look at my face, I can tell. I'm going to use two blushes in this video because I have so many new blushes I need to get through. I'm just going to start doubling up. So this first one that I'm going to try on one cheek is this ColourPop Super Shock Cheek Matte and Cindy Color Growth Flirt. I have never tried anything from Flower Beauty. It's the Flower Pots Powder Blush and it's in the color Berry More PB5. I remember swatching this in my haul that I mentioned this in and the swatch was a little bit scary. I got rid of this a different color. I don't know if it was the color or if it was the actual formula that does not like my skin. So it seems to be really pretty when you swatch it but that other color I had between the sheets I think it was it made my skin look so ashy. I think this is the most bright poppy color that they have so I wanted to see if there was something that I could recommend to people with darker skin. And this also has like a cream powdery-ish texture. I can't explain that. We're going to use this ColourPop one first and I'm just taking this Real Techniques. This is the Expert Face Brush. Um, hello. Y'all saw how much product I got and there's nothing. Now that I packed on a little bit more product, I can see the pink. This definitely is better than the first one. It's just very faint. It's very, very, very faint. And I'm using a lot of product. I have been swirling in here. So you know what, we're gonna do a third coat and see if that makes any of a difference. Oh, well, hello. She decided to show up now after three coats. I think maybe the colors are not blushy colors. Like when I think of blush, I think of like a nice blushy pink tint to the skin. These just are not super natural colors. Like this is very high pink in your face. You, you see what I mean? It's not like a natural flush. So you know what? I think I'm gonna have to give it up on these blushes because I really wanted to like you, but you are making it hard. Go over this with a foundation brush that had that concealer on it. That helped a little bit. I'm not crazy about this. This is gonna go exactly where the other one went in the full face I'm getting rid of. But see, look, after I did that, there's nothing left. Let's see if we have any more luck with this. It just looks like I put literally nothing on my face. Okay, see, that. Mm, eh. this not bad, especially for me to dip into it once. This has glitter in it. Hmm, I don't know how we feel about that. I mean, you can tell that there's blush on this side versus this side. I'm just gonna put a little bit over here. Yeah, this definitely is applying better than it did when it was swatched. Not bad. I don't know how I feel about the glitter. It's not super glittery. Like you guys can't tell when I move my face, but I can see little specks in there. Out of the two, I like this one a lot better. This one just, I don't know. It has a really weird formula. If you guys ever buy it or a lot of swatch stuff in the store, if you ever get your chance to put your finger in it, you'll know what I mean when it just has a really weird consistency to it. Definitely has little sheens of glitter. So if you're like completely against that, I would would not recommend trying this. I'm not gonna lie, I actually thought that this one was going to do better than this one solely based off swatches. That shows you swatches will not tell you everything that you need to know about a product. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I'm actually really excited to try this highlighter palette too. This is from Essence and it is the Pure Nude Sunlighter Palette and this is just what it looks like. So super gorge. These two over here are more on the pinky side versus these. They pull pink, but they're a little bit more golden. I don't know. I feel like I should do pink just because I have pink on my eyes. And I'm gonna mix these two right here. And the pants on these are actually a reasonable size and you get a mirror in there too. And these look like they'd be really pretty eyeshadows too. This 
these are like the type of glow that comes from within it's like a nice pretty natural glow it's more of a sheen slash shimmer okay i really like this and i know i did not pay a whole lot for this at all essence is a really really super affordable brand i kind of messed up because usually i'll do my setting spray and then my highlighter but we're just gonna go ahead and do setting spray because there's already highlighter on my face today we are going to be using this wet and wild matte finish photo focus setting spray i have never tried any of their setting sprays so we're gonna see how we like this i probably used a little bit more than what i needed this has a really nice mister but you get a lot of products most of the time when i can't feel a mister i know i'm getting product but that actually distributed really easily and you don't need a whole lot it actually has a pretty nice scent in it for this to be mattifying most of the time when you are using a mattifying setting spray nine times out of ten it's gonna have alcohol in it i could smell like the slightest scent of alcohol in here but it actually smells, it has like a makeup smell to it. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. It actually feels a little bit sticky. I accidentally got some on my arm and my elbow and I'm going like this and it feels a little bit sticky. And it seems like it's taking a little more time than what my setting spray usually does to set down. It did something really, really weird over here. I don't know what happened. It looks like splotchy almost. My pores look different than what they did before I put that on. All of the texture is being accentuated everywhere. This burns. And even here, you guys can see all of my craters are back. I quickly just lined my lips using this Juvia's Place Luxe Lip Liner. And this is in the color Scorpio. I actually don't use this color very much. Burgundy reddish color, reddish brownish color. But we do have a new lipstick. This is the MAC Love Me Lipstick. And this is in the color 408 Baited Breath. It's like this really pretty mauve color, almost like a more fall color, but it pulls a little bit more purplish slash pinkish, and I feel like it'd look really good with the eyes. I love. Like, those two colors together, I kind of have, like, an almost ombre look. This is the completed look, everybody, so I'm just gonna go through and kind of go through my hits and misses. I really enjoyed this Fenty Beauty eyebrow pencil. I thought it was really nice, and I also like the fact that it kind of has something that sets it apart from other brow pencils. It's a really nice color. I felt like the pigment was not too much, but it also wasn't too little, and it was really easy to work with. The concealer I also really like. This is, I will say, a little bit more of a medium coverage. I usually go for full coverage, but I still like it. It was really creamy. Probably one of the most creamy. Maybe even more creamy than the NARS Soft Matte. Am I gonna say it? But yeah, I like this. Super child friendly. And girl, she has a mirror. Like, come on. Snaps. This is everything. You will be seeing her all the time. I don't care what season it is. Fall, winter, summer, spring. I don't know how much this retails for, but I'm going to tell you right now, if it is high end, it is so worth it. A, the color scheme is amazing. B, I tried the shimmers and the mattes and they are both so freaking amazing. <gasps> Hold on, we gotta do my inner corner shade. What's wrong with me? Okay, we're gonna take the color Major Spotlight right down here. Also, I'm not doing mascara because I don't have a new one and um, I really don't feel like putting any on. If I'm gonna be like completely honest with you guys right now, I think it retails for like 40 bucks. I don't know if I would pay that much for it, but it's all right. I think it'd be really nice paired with like a pore filling primer or a mattifying primer. So I'll have to try that, but not bad. I really don't know about her. She's all right, but I don't know about her. We, we're gonna see how it wears. I can tell you now, this is a no. I can't even believe that they charged $15 at one point for this because that is just embarrassing. I actually really do like this brush. I think that this is gonna be probably one of my a new favorite for underneath my eyes when I do use a brush. Most of the time I use the sponge, but I really liked how this blended out that concealer. We love her, we hate her, and we really love her. Like we really, really love her. I think I'm so excited because I have shared with you guys. I have been struggling to find an affordable loose powder for you guys that I could recommend and be like, this is as good as some of my high-end products. Now all I need to do is find an affordable translucent powder that works. I like it, I can't tell like I said, I thought that it kind of had a weird pinkish tint to my skin. It looked really beautiful, especially with the sponge going onto the skin. This kind of scarred me. I don't know. Maybe it's the products that I use, so I'm going to continue to use it a couple more times. And then the lipstick, just a nice, pretty, vampy color. And it isn't matte, by the way. It's just a satin, so this is how it's going to stay. I would say the pigment is like medium on it, but it is a really pretty combo, especially with this lip liner. Lastly, I think this highlighter palette is gorgeous. 
and it's also super affordable. I'm really excited to try these gold highlighters because most of the time I do tend to lean toward gold highlighter. That is everything for today's video, guys. It was kind of like a half and half, really. I felt like we had some really good products and then some products I definitely could have went without. If you guys did like this video, lucky you, I have a whole playlist full of full face of first impressions that I will link right up here. And I also have all of my playlists linked down in the description box if you guys are binge watchers. And also something I added to my description box starting this video is shade references for you guys. If you think you're around my shade, I have all the foundations that I think are the best matches for me and references for you guys that you kind of know what I'm working with. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.